just wouldn't wake up. I couldn't get him to open up his eyes. I would hear like a lot of like banging, like banging sounds. He would move so much that it was kind of like, it was dangerous to sleep with him. Sometimes I would wake up and try to find him. He wasn't in his bed anymore. But, like there's something wrong, like this isn't normal. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a little bit about screen time and how it looks like in our home. But specifically, I'm gonna share with you guys um, a little bit about our screen time journey when it comes to specifically my oldest son, uh, just because he does have some health conditions that incorporating screen time does make it worse and I'm gonna get into that and give you guys a background story on that but if it is your first time here welcome I am a homeschool mom of three kids and I get asked a lot regarding screen time I think that's one of like comments that I get on my videos all the time how do you handle screen time what do you do and I've never actually filmed a video about this just because I uh I get nervous about talking about screen time because it could look different from for everyone uh, just because I do things a certain way doesn't mean you have to do things a certain way I'm going to just give you a whole background story it's gonna be very casual and I'll let you know a little bit about my son's condition and uh, just tell you the story of why we keep screen time to a minimum and when I do use too much screen time what happens then uh, when it comes to my son's health and overall well-being. Before we start I did want to thank Geeker for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't heard of Geeker yet guys I am so excited to share a little bit about them. The Geeker Super Slide is a unique and innovative brain teaser puzzle toy that combines the challenge of a Rubik's Cube with the excitement of sliding puzzles. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced solver, it offers 500 plus levels. The goal is to get the large square to the middle bottom. One of the things I really like about the Geeker is that it's fun, challenging, and entertaining. The Super Slide is my favorite. There's several colors to choose from, and it provides hours of engaging fun and mental stimulation for all ages. Now for the Geeker Super Blocks, the goal is to fill the lights area with the indicated color or colors of puzzles. There is a thousand plus levels to explore. Okay, as you can see on the screen, it tells uh, Nicholas which is the, um, the blocks that he has to use. So for this one, he has to use red and yellow. So we have the red and yellow here. As it advances, it'll tell you the different colors that they have to use. And uh, Nicholas, what happens when you put the wrong blocks in? Um, it flashes. It like flashes, this. yeah. Great. And he's on to the next level. The wonderful thing is that it comes with this little carrying case so you can put it all away after you're finished with it. For both devices, it helps build critical skills, helps with stress and anxiety, improves short-term memory, and is perfect for road trips and travel. It keeps everyone entertained for hours, and trust me, it's not only for kids. The adults have a lot of fun too. So make sure to check out Geeker if you haven't already. When Nicholas was born, uh, within two to three weeks, I noticed that Nicholas would not wake up at night. Uh, so he was two, two to three week old baby. And one of my concerns when I went to my doctor was that I couldn't wake him up for his feedings. He just wouldn't wake up. I couldn't get him to open up his eyes and I was breastfeeding at the time. And I expressed my concerns to the doctor and they just said, you know what, maybe you just have a really good baby. And I was concerned because in the beginning, when you do have a newborn, they do say to feed the baby every three to four hours. So I was trying to do that and I did not have any luck. And she just said, you know what, you just probably have a really good baby. I did have concerns of him rolling around in his sleep at two to three weeks. Uh, we put him in a crib, but he would move all around the crib. And I just thought that was so strange for a two to three week old because when he was awake, 
he would not, you know, roll or anything like that. It was only when he was asleep. And sometimes he would get stuck. Um, you know how the crib, like you don't put anything around the crib because they say that because of SIDS and whatnot. So I would leave it bare, but sometimes his foot would get stuck in his hand and it was just, yeah, I was just like, wow, he moves a lot. But I just thought, you know what? The doctor said there's nothing to worry about. I'm not gonna worry about it. When he got a little bit older, um, around the three to four year old mark we put him into a toddler bed he had his we bought a car bed for him because he was a big boy now and we uh got him into a bed like a normal size bed and he was so excited about it uh one of the things that i did notice about him is that he slept really really well like 12 hours like i'd never had any issues of him actually waking up and we used to joke that it's like almost like he's dead in his sleep and um i didn't think too much of it the only time I started getting more concerned is when um, Nicholas started going to preschool and it started getting worse. In preschool, in kindergarten, um, they do like a lot of like watching stuff nowadays, like electronic. Even some of his uh, work that he took home was on screens. And I never used to think anything wrong with screens. I just thought like if it's educational, why not? Um, so I never really used to control screens too much as long as it was something educational that he was watching on TV. I was okay with it, but he used to go to preschool, kindergarten, like it's not like we were on TV all the time, but I mean, I wouldn't monitor it per se. I wanted to mention that because I think that's really important. So I started noticing that Nicholas started moving a lot at night and I would hear like a lot of like banging, like banging sounds. And we used to joke around because sometimes he would sleep in the same bed as, bed as us and he would kind of hurt us. Like he would move so much that it was kind of like, it was dangerous to sleep with him. And I thought that was kind of weird, but people say that all kids move a lot, right? So I just didn't think anything. I didn't have any other, you know, child to compare it to. So I just thought maybe that's something normal. But when he started sleeping in his own bed, I noticed that he was banging so much that he would wake up and he would feel sore and he would feel kind of bruised. There was like bruises on him. Sometimes I would wake up and try to find him. He wasn't in his bed anymore. I would find him in the closet. I would find him underneath the bed. And I was like, where is my son? Like, where is he? And then he would be underneath the bed because he would move and he would roll off. And mind you, there are like railings on the bed. Um, they've, we've always had railings on the bed and he could get through it because he would, he would, he gets up. Like it's the weirdest thing because I've seen him before and he just gets up. Once, um, I started finding him underneath the bed and you know, in the closet and I was, we were hearing so much noise with him like sleeping, like the banging on the walls and whatnot, I just thought that like there's something wrong, like this isn't normal. Uh, so I ended up going to the doctor, we got referred to a pediatrician, and then from a pediatrician we went to a sleep specialist because I explained to them everything that was going on because it only happened during his sleep. And the first thing that he would ask is, he, he obviously did his assessment and whatnot, and he told me that he had a couple of conditions that he could have think of and I would put I'll put the conditions here one of them was um, which would make sense because whenever we would I'm just grabbing the condition here so I can read it to you guys which would make sense because he was like a violent sleeper we call him like a violent sleeper because we would get hurt every time that we would sleep with him it's called rapid eye movement sleep behavior disorder which you physically act out vivid often unpleasant dreams with focal sounds and sudden often violent arm and leg movements during REM sleep and due to this it could be very dangerous to sleep with someone that has that condition um also long sleep disorder um anyways a bunch of different you know disorders the doctor did mention that he might have but the first thing that he mentioned to me is cut out the screens like if you can cut out the screens you might see a big improvement and if you don't then we can reassess and obviously he doesn't want to give him any medication or anything like that so let's take a look and see if we cut off the screens will it work and i was like okay yeah like let me try it out Long and behold, I cut off the screens and guess what happened? Nicholas was not moving as much at night. Sometimes he wouldn't move at all. He um, he still like would sleep, like be a heavy sleeper, but I wouldn't find him underneath the bed. I wouldn't find him in the closet. So me being able to, we did like a detox, basically no screens. And I mean like no educational screens, no nothing. It's something with the screens, right? Because um, if you actually research it, 
even when you read on your like phone you can see that it kind of it strains your eyes and I mean I don't have to tell you all about you know what screen time does because I'm sure there's a lot of different videos out there but it's proven that it does have a negative effect on kids even with them learning with their behavior so on and so forth so it does really affect you up here and it did affect him now it's not to say that he didn't have this condition before because i noticed from a young age that he would move around and obviously i wasn't showing my baby like screen time at that age he was born with a condition that basically he's a heavy sleeper right he's a very very heavy sleeper and he has a different conditions that the doctor you know said that are potentially he has right potentially he has a bunch of different conditions here's the thing though um <laughs> screens make it worse screen time makes condition worse and honestly he has the normal things that screen time will do with a child makes them impatient makes him not want to do schoolwork right do homeschool makes him more irritable all those kind of stuff so i noticed that if we do a lot of screen times in our home that that does happen but it also affects his sleep condition so I'm telling you this not because I'm telling you your kid has like a sleep condition but screens all this kind of stuff um, can have a negative effect in our kids and I know that it's something that we try to take advantage of for us to get things done and whatnot and trust me I do that too uh, with all my kids but it just makes me think like I have to be more mindful when it comes to my kids and their screen time now do we still do screen time in our home definitely I take advantage of a lot of different things but I do try to time our screen time between 30 minutes to an hour that's when I found the sweet spot but if I feel like we go over that uh, when I say 30 minutes to an hour I say 30 minutes to an hour a day um, I feel like when we go over that there is some issues and sometimes I'll even do like a detox week where we will not have any screen times. I've done that before and I've seen so many benefits of it. It was hard at first because the kids were like, oh, we're bored. And they're used to kind of like, you know, watching, you know, it's not something like really bad. Like they like wild crats and um, we like watching um, like Portuguese songs and that kind of stuff. Like it's not nothing bad. He likes playing on his Osmo player and that's all amazing. Like there's a lot of benefits to it but I do have to be mindful with our screen time. And I say that for my youngest ones too, right? There's a lot of studies out there, you know, that show how screen times can have a negative impact on our kids. And it has a negative impact on us too. Like when I feel like when I'm on the screens, like I feel like I can become more impatient, more irritable. And it's, it's kind of like, ugh, because my job revolves around me posting videos, researching um, and emails and that kind of stuff like I have to do that kind of stuff but I've actually put like a timer on my Instagram to tell me like once I reach an hour on Instagram uh, a day it'll tell me you know you have to get out of Instagram or you have to get out of this app or whatnot and sometimes I'm working on there because I'm working on a reel and I'm super slow when it comes to like technology <laughs> but I try to keep myself, you know, um, be mindful of the screen time as well for myself because it will make me irritable and maybe affect even our homeschool and my attitude. So I really sometimes have to check myself. And I've spoken about this in my previous videos. How I want to be more mindful of that as well. So I think it's good for us to be more mindful, for us to be more mindful of our kids and what they're watching and uh just that screen you know that screen it does make a difference i'm a little bit nervous because some of the things that nicholas has for his next coming year does involve screen time so i'm going to see how that works out um even his math has i think video lessons but i don't think they're too long um but i do try to be mindful of that because it does affect him and i'm not perfect by no means i fail daily and i've had times where i've allowed him too much screen time and i just definitely see the negative effects of it just a perfect example we were in a move he has been going on screens more lately just because we've been so busy with our move and and whatnot uh so i did notice that he was moving a lot more at night and he the sudden movements were hurting him i remember he's he was waking up and he's like my legs are so sore and i heard him moving around and whatnot so it does affect him very much when he does have 
you know, too much screen time. So I try to be more mindful. I tell you, like, I struggle with it sometimes as well, but I've seen the benefits of reducing it. So that's why I wanted to make this video. Uh, there is just so many different fun things that kids can do. And I feel like back in the day, I feel like we weren't, there was not so much to do with screens, you know? And it's kind of hard sometimes too, because some of us live in a country that is very, very cold for most of, you know, the months. Um, obviously we take more advantage of the summer and we can go outside, but in the winter you can do that too. But it gets hard when it's minus 30 degrees, minus 40. It gets hard, especially if you're in a season of life when you have very young littles, they're not gonna stay outside as much. It's hard sometimes, even for us to get out when it's that cold. So I know that it's, it's tough, you know, we take advantage of that screen time, but there's just so much stuff that we can do and we just have to be creative. That's why I wanted to mention Geeker. I think it's an awesome device activity for your child that doesn't involve the screen and helps your child uh, with many different things such as critical thinking. Developmentally, it helps your child as well. So I really wanted to mention them. I will have a coupon code down below uh, that you can take a look at and see if that would be a good fit for you and your kids. This is a great gift idea for birthdays, holidays or just because uh kind of gifts when it comes like to back to school or end of school year there's so many ways that you can gift this to a child and i'm telling you right now it has been a hit in our home so uh thank you so much geeker for sending that over to us we love it so much and make sure to check them out down below guys thank you so much for watching and again if you haven't subscribed yet make sure to subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Today and not tomorrow.